Okay, I report. As I discussed uh, in the last session, uh, there are uh, three things. Uh, ETL, apart from reporting part, the ETL, the E stands for extract, T trans stands for transform, and L stands for loading. Okay. Sorry, I left my um, stylus pen in Bangalore office. Okay. Currently, I'm working out of uh, Chennai. Okay. So, this is uh, what your operational source system. This is where all your application related data gets stored. For example, you are using the CRM application, uh, Salesforce CRM application. That Salesforce CRM application related data gets stored in this database. Okay, let's assume that. Okay. And let's say you have the SQL Server database. Uh, SQL Server got installed in this uh, thing, in this uh, server. And um, here you have a database dedicated for your application. For example, you have e-commerce application, all the orders raised by the users that gets captured here. And right, so th this is for the end user purpose. You have this one, right? This is called OLTP system. And likewise, you have different um, variety of source systems. For example, in the case of Oracle Labs, Oracle Financials, how many of you have worked with Oracle Labs? Oracle Apps have a lot of modules Oracle, this one, the costing and um, project management uh, and uh, purchase, right? Likewise, different modules are there. So in that case, what will happen is you have an Oracle database. You have Oracle database, uh, SQL Server database, you have Salesforce related database. And apart from that, you get data from variety of source systems, so like uh, some variety of files or file types, something like uh, comma separated values file, Excel file, JSON file, and so on, okay? In the case of Hadoop, nowadays we are working with Hadoop. Uh, you have, the Parquet is very popular. And again, in the case of Hadoop, um, there are different types of sources, Mark Logic, SQL, and likewise different uh, types of um, ecosystem components are there. So likewise, you know, the customers, uh, they store, the, they have the data stored across a variety of uh, source systems and variety of files. Uh, uh, you know, the we have something called data warehouse. They have something called data warehouse. In the case of data warehouse, all the historical data gets stored here. So here the historical data get stored here in the case of data warehouse. Okay. But here it is not like that. In this case, uh, they store maximum, maybe right, one year or two year data. That's all. If they store a longer amount of data in the source system itself, it will literally slow down the performance. When the customer wants to check out a product from your website, it will take longer time. Obviously, they lose patience and they walk out of your application. They go and buy it from somewhere else, right? So here, uh, the concurrency, we have some concurrency, multiple users uh, are accessing this database. In this case, in the case of OLTP system, operational source system. So in that case, this database, uh, should have uh, you know limited amount of data in it. If you have you among us amount of data, it literally slowed down the performance, especially when multiple users access this database. Um, it will be very slow. Okay, so what for that reason, uh, what these date these type of database are designed in such a way to hold uh, limited amount of data and also the uh, data modeling. Uh, you know they use something called Erwin data model. For normalization they do normalization everything okay that we'll discuss it later so net net uh, the source system will have limited amount of data whereas the staging area will have very very limited amount of data in it so here you have at least two years of data or one year data here you will have you know just three months or six months of data only you'll be having it here since the volume of the data is very very less compared to operational source system and data warehouse uh, here, we do all kind of data transformation. For example, you want to combine the data from various uh, source systems, okay? And uh, let's say, you know, um, the different, um, you are uh, running a retail uh, chain. You have, um, you know, 2,500 uh, retail chains are there. All the databases, related data are stored in different schemas, you know, take everything, combine it, and then consolidate all the data and make sure that in case of any duplicates, remove it. And then in case of any missing values, right, um, you know, push it to audit table. We have something called audit table. The audit table, you will be uh, monitoring it uh, every now and then. So in case of any du duplicate records, in, sorry, in case of any um, missing values or something like it will get stored there. 
right? And also here we can combine all the different um, chains of data and then we store it in a uh, single table and then we will load the uh, cleaned, processed, pre-processed data into our data warehouse. The data warehouse will hold uh, five years of data, 10 years of data, depends on the domain. For example, you are working in banking. Banking, obviously, the customers are you know, having a relationship with your bank uh, since long time. Hence, uh, the volume of the data is very, very huge in the case of data warehouse, in the case of banking, okay? The data warehouse database. So even the data warehouse can also be SQL Server. Uh, even the old TP can also be SQL Server. Only the, 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 you know, both of them are database only. We create the database uh, in the source system. Here also we create the database. But this database is meant for analytics, which is nothing but data warehouse. This database we created meant for the end users. End users, they will like, since we are logically separating the databases, uh, one for analytics, other one is for the, you, you know, the, the user um, access, end user access, the performance will not get affected here. If you store both the historical data and also if you allow multiple users to access the data concurrently, it will literally slow down uh, everything. So for that purpose, we logically separate uh, the data. Uh, one is meant for analytics, the data warehouse. The other one is meant for application users. Okay. And once you load the cleaned data, so this is a temporary area. This is where we do all kind of cleaning everything, data cleaning everything, pre-processing, and then we store the data here. And here you will have uh, the historical data, as I told you. And once you have the clean data, next what you do is uh, we create the reports using Power BI reporting tool. Okay, Power BI is uh, what Microsoft claims is uh, Power BI tool is not only meant for creating the reports or dashboards. It is also with this, you can also do the data transform ETL. You can do it with um, Power BI. So ETL plus reporting, both you can do it with Power BI. Now, what we will do is um, uh, our focus in today's session is how to the E, how to extract the data. Let's say the data is available in different source systems. How do we extract the data from different sources? First thing is, um, uh, you know, the extraction part, we'll take a look at it. And next one is uh, once we explore different types of source system, how to connect it and how to pull the data from it and store it here. Uh, yes, um, what is the question uh, from you? Um, uh, yeah, Divya, your question is, Divya's question is, um, here we extract the data. So does that mean the same table will get copied? Yes, that's a very good, a very valid point. For example, you have a customer table here. You simply, you know, duplicate the data here and you have customer address data here, table, separate table, that also you duplicate it simply here, all the data, you push it here. Okay. This is kind of a temporary source system. Okay. As well as uh, processing area. Okay. And here um, also, right, uh, we will be uh, simply copying the duplicating the records uh, from the duplicating the table itself here. Okay. The reason is you know, you will have only the read only access here between your operational source and the staging area. If I allow you to, you know, read the data as well as do the data cleaning, everything, for example, join the tables, multiple, for example, your customer table and customer address table is there. So single table, they split it into two different tables. The reason is if you store the data in two different tables for the same entity customer, uh, the volume of the data that requires to store in each table is less. Okay, so in that case, uh, concurrently when the user access, the performance will be faster. That is how they designed it. The design for the data model design for the source system is different from the data model design for the data warehouse. You need to understand this one. So here we simply extract the table data, simply duplicate the table data. And then what we do is we combine the data and then we do the aggregation everything here. But here, when you extract the data as well as you do the data transformation or joining the tables, right? It will literally slow down. It will cause a bottleneck on your source system table itself or database itself. Okay. So that is what, <coughs> you know, it's something like, you know, your, your person is uh, working in simple analogy, maybe a stupid uh, thing. A person is working in, you know, some uh, abroad, right? So family head. 
and he is simply sending the money. And if you ask him to earn money as well as take care of the family or you know pay the uh, do the all household related tasks, he will be overloaded, isn't it? Simply, he is he can send he can pump the money to the family who lives uh, here in India, and the family should take care of the rest of things, you know, uh, purchasing vegetables and uh, ordering the food, everything, right? So it's something like that. If you know, if you if you overburden him, what will happen? It will, you know, he will be, uh, he will not be able to do that. Yes, all the data will be clean, right? So that's the whole idea of data warehouse. Okay, the whole idea of data warehouse is uh, the first reason for having a data warehouse so have the historical data in it. Okay, so that you can perform like for like analysis, current year sales performance versus previous year sales performance. Current quarter sales performance versus the previous year current quarter sales performance. For the last four years, same quarter sales performance, if you want to compare it side by side, that is possible. Uh, number one is uh, data warehouse uh, will be holding the historical data. Second thing is it is non volatile, it will not undergo any changes once you store it. And then um, historical and non volatile. Uh, right, so yeah, that is what uh, data is all about. And next one is it's a time variant. Okay, so you store the time based data, everything, and it's a clean data. Uh, and uh, Power BI, what we do using the tool, you'll simply connect to this database and pull the tables. And still, you will be doing some other further transformation here. So not so not necessarily all the columns that you require it, uh, you know, for your report, it is available. But majority of the cases, 90 percentage of uh, your reporting needs, uh, in the sense of reporting uh, for your reports, what the columns or tables are required, you know, all these things are available here itself. We design it that way. But, but this, there are some cases you will go uh, extra mile and add additional columns or something like that, okay? For that purpose, you'll be using it, okay? You do a little bit transformation here. Here also you do the transformation, okay? Uh, again, uh, for example, they wanted to see, compare the current year sales with previous year sales in the report, right? So for that, uh, you know, you have some kind of lead or you want, they want to display the current year, current month sales along with the previous month sales, the lead lag functions, right? You want to perform it. You need to do a little bit, um, you know, uh, you need to use some DAX functions to do that, okay? But uh, yeah, almost 95% of your data will be clean in the case of data errors. Okay, so now what we'll do is we will jump into Power BI Desktop and uh, understand how to load the uh, CSU. I think we explored, you know, no, no, this is the first thing because of uh, some network issues, I was not able to Power BI Desktop. I'll just uh, launch the Power BI Desktop. Mm, anyhow, um, uh, I guess uh, all of you have installed, right? Ex uh, except uh, those who attend for demo session, okay? Uh, and you have watched my videos and um, yeah, she was having some issue. She did not join. Okay, I will check with her later. So in case you watch my videos, in the interest of time, the installation is pretty simple. Power BI and SQL Server, even SSMS, okay? And uh, if you think, uh, you know, you need my help, um, based on the majority's response, we'll dedicate a separate session, okay? Fine. So to start with, let us understand, supposing the data is available in the CSV file, comma separated value file, how to load them into a Power BI desktop, okay? The so staging area, something like, uh, you know, um, let's say you connect to this database, or it could be a database, or it could be a, you know, folder, okay, in the cloud, um, you know, storage area, okay? So here we do all kind of... Um, data transmission everything. Now what I just launched the Power BI desktop. Let's wait for a few seconds. Yes, um, um, Aishu and um, Praveen and Soundarya, all the data files are available in my website. Okay, you can download it. And uh, otherwise, the you know, since today being the, uh, you know, second, though it is second, it's kind of a first session only. What you do is just watch what I do and you can go and download it from my website. Okay. Yeah. You can go to deepneuron.in and with your login credentials, I believe all of you have received the login credentials, right? Uh, you log in with your credentials and um, if you click on the instructor-led course, 
uh, in the you know from the top you will find the fourth one that is your download fifth one sorry fifth one is your downloadable resources when you click on all the data files report files everything including SQL script file, you can download from there okay let me check uh, if our data desktop has been launched initially it will be a bit slow the power bi desktop you need to have a lot of patience Power BI. You just once you install the Power BI um, desktop, just uh, press the window key in your keyboard, and here you type Power BI desktop, and here you will find this icon, which means your software got installed successfully. You click on it once, and wait for some time. Initially, it will take a lot of time. Okay, but once you open it, uh, you know it, you know, and once you open it, and if you try to open one more report file. It will be fast only, but first time only it will be very slow. Still it is loading it. One second, let me close all the other applications. The SQL server, let it be there because I am going to cover the SQL server part, how to connect to SQL server thing. Yeah, it is being launched. let me close it because the first time it will be very slow sometimes what will happen is when you launch it first time it will be very slow you close it and then you launch it again so that the performance will be very fast Just give me a second. In the meanwhile, let it launch. Uh, you know, just give me a second. Uh, in the meanwhile, I will send some files to my. Sorry. One second, let me just check. Yeah.
Yeah, at last it got launched. Let's uh, wait for a few seconds. Yeah, I know that uh, because I have a mix of people here. Maybe uh, the first one is very, very simple one, right? Uh, loading the CSV file and all. Uh, give me a second, okay? Uh, because others, they don't know the ABCs of this one. I have to... So now um, we can see the Power BI desktop got launched. And this is what your welcome screen. This is not required. I'm going to click on the cross here. What you're seeing currently is your Power BI desktop. And here on the left side, you can see three icons. This is your report view and data view. And the next one is a model view. Here you can see the get data. <clears throat> what we'll do is we are going to load the <clears throat> CSV file. And so I'm going to select this option, text to CSV. And here I just say sales underscore uh, W04, or just simply you can type here, just of searching this, 04.cc. I'm sure this file is available. I'm going to hit the open button. It'll now Power BI Desktop establishes a connection with the CSV file. And then it will open up the preview or data preview window. So this is what your preview window, you can see that sales underscore W04.csv. And uh, as the name suggests, right, uh, in the preview window, you can see only few records from your entire file. So this is what my file name. It is not showing the entire data. You know, the reason why the preview is um, displayed here is, to, this is to make sure that, uh, is this the intended file? Is this the intended file? We want to load it into Power BI Desktop. And also, uh, we will get a glimpse of the quality of the data, right? Uh, how the, for example, here, you can see that um, the, say in the sales column, the value 2309 got prefixed with dollar. In the case of numeric column, if any numeric value get mixed up with uh, this kind of, uh, you know, character data or Unicode character, unique character data, the entire column will get converted as a text data. If this data gets converted as a text data, you cannot perform any arithmetic operation. Let's say, you know, this is your gross sales. If you want to find out the net sales, obviously you need to subtract the discount uh, and um, other uh, cost, right? Uh, other thing, discount and any uh, sales related thing, right? You need to subtract it from then again, tax, everything to subtract in order to get the net sales. Since uh, this one gets converted as a text data due to this thing, uh, the unique code character got mixed with the numeric value. Even if you have a single value uh, with this kind of um, uh, text mixed with uh, the numeric value, alpha numeric, right? Uh, the entire column will become a text data. So here you need to do some data transformation. You need to reformat. You need to convert that numeric data. Right? But it is not a straightforward. You need to remove the dollar. And then yeah, you need to convert this as a decimal data type, okay? But before that, we could see one more thing, NA. NA stands for not available. In case of any blank values are there in your given data set, what Power BI does is it assigns the value called NA. NA stands for not available. So what we will do is, um, you know, we will replace this by zero. And, um, and then we will have to convert it to decimal value. And only then this one will get successfully converted as a decimal data type, okay? So now what I do is, um, here we have three options. The cancel is pretty common sense, right? If you hit this button, the data will not get loaded. Whereas the transform data, if you hit this one, we have a component called uh, the Power Query Editor. 
Power Query Editor, often I refer it with our home kitchen. So that is where we do data cleaning, right? So the, all the uh, food items, we buy it and then we clean it there, right? So similarly, in the case of um, when you hit the transform data, it will open up the Power Query Editor. That is where we do data cleaning. everything. But at this moment, I just hit the load button to first let it load the data. We will do the transformation later. Now it is creating the connection in our model. So this is what our model view. When it comes to Power BI Desktop, you have to be familiar with the data modeling concept. Okay. Uh, importantly, the dimensional data modeling concept should be knowing it. There are two types of um, dimensional data modeling. One is the star schema and other approach is snowflake schema. We will explore it uh, down the line. Uh, okay, so now we can see that uh, 25,004 rows got loaded into Power BI Desktop. Uh, we got that message, but um, where can I find the data for that file? Look here on the right side, just beneath the data pane, we'll find sales underscore W04 here. Okay, and uh, next to that, you will find this icon. When you click on this, it will get expanded. Okay. So here you can see that all the columns that belongs to this file or table is visible here. And uh, for, you know, if you see something here, if you notice it very clearly, this is a table icon. But uh, what we loaded was a CSV file, comma separated value file, but uh, Power BI, uh, you know, assigned the um, icon as a table, which means irrespective of the type of the file, be it a, JSON file, CSV file, Excel file, or Oracle table, SQL server table, Hadoop, uh, Parquet file, whatever the file you load it into the Power BI desktop, everything will be considered as a table. Something like respective of the uh, state you belong, end of the day, you all called India, right? The same thing, the, you know, same thing, something like this, okay? So, irrespective of the type of the file that you load it in Power BI, everything is considered as a table. Okay, fine. Now, um, the sales W04 has been considered as a table according to Power BI Desktop. All the columns I can see it. And when I see um, some columns, right uh, next to that, uh, we can see the sigma notation. This tells us by default, uh, all the numeric columns, uh, you know, when you drag and drop it into a visual, it will perform total on that column if i let's say you have a uh, you know transaction table you have 100 records for each record you will have quantity isn't it but when you drag and drop a quantity into a visual i'll just show you here so this is a table visual i'll click on it it will get dropped here and the moment when i drop the quantity here it will not give the itemized unit of uh, unit sold it will give you the total unit sold, the quantity, total quantity that we sold. So that is what the sigma notation tells us. The D, you know, it's sigma is nothing but sum. And in this case, uh, the default aggregation function is sum. By default, it does the. Okay, if you think, you might be thinking this. So let's say if I wanted to see the transaction level data rather than the total quantity, is it possible to see that? Yes. You can click on the drop down here and then you click on don't summarize. You have an option, uh, you know, to enable don't summarize, but the default one is sum of quantity. That is what this notation tells. With this notation, we can quickly make out how many number of numeric columns are there. Okay, row ID, shipping cost. But unfortunately, when you see the sales next to that, we don't see the sum notation the sigma notation as i told you look here so okay fine so you just keep that uh, in mind about the sigma everything now the next question is where can i see the data here i want to see the entire data so we have something called data view okay this is what your report view this is what your data view okay if you click on it here you can see sales underscore w04 tables data out here right you can see it here you can see all the kind of road or ID, order ID, order date. And if you use this scroll bar to scroll towards the right side, 
you can see each and every column. So ideally, as a data analyst or a data scientist, you should be familiar with the data. Okay, what data we have it in each column, and do you have any data related issues? Everything you need to explore it. Okay. So okay, fine. All the data got loaded, and at the uh, left lower bottom, we can see that this file consists of twenty five thousand four row records are there in it. Very good. And also, if you select uh, the categorical column, like uh, state column. Uh, it will show you how many distinct values are there. So 1011. So though we have 25,004 record, that doesn't mean 25,000 states are there, isn't it? The same state might be occurring more than one time. So it will give you the distinct values also if you select any specific column. Along with that, it will display the total number of records. This is for categorical column. Okay, And um, if you go here, and uh, if you click on the quantity column, even for this, it gives you the distinct values. Not only the category, even for the numeric column, it gives you. And even in the data view, so currently we are in data view, right? Even in the data view, you can see the data type for each and every column. So look here, I selected the quantity column. Quantity is a whole number. It's an integer data type. And for example, I want to see the data type for the profit column. And if I click on it here, you can see that it's a decimal number. Obviously, it's a decimal number. When I click on sales column, unfortunately, it's a text data type. Power BI, by default, assigned text data because one value we have seen it in the preview window got mixed with dollar. Just because one value got mixed with dollar, it, you know, it, um, it assigned the text data for the entire column. You know, this, this, is, uh, this is also one time. It requires some kind of transformation or treatment. Right? It requires some kind of treatment in terms of converting it as a numeric data type. You have an option to convert uh, the data type here itself. You can click on the drop down. You can see all the data. You can click on the decimal number, but don't ever do that here. Okay, Don't ever do that here because we have some issue here. First, we need to address the issue. Without addressing the issue, if you directly go ahead and uh, convert to decimal number, what will happen? Right? It's something like before operation, surgery, the patient lung should be clear, right? The person, patient has a wheezing problem, he is not eligible for anesthesia. How many, I don't know how many of you are, because my mother, I took my mother several times to hospital, I learned so many medical things, okay? Right? Without even assessing, uh, right? Without even addressing the basic thing, right? If you jump into directly, it will cause problem, okay? That is the reason why what we'll do is first we will remove the dollar and then we will replace the NA by zero and then we will convert the decimal data. Okay, what is going to happen if I try it out here? If you try it out here, what will happen is if you directly convert the decimal number, what will happen is same thing without uh, fixing the wheezing problem. If you do the surgery, what will happen? Gone. You know, you, you, know, you will develop a lot of complications. The lung should function well. Uh, to get the proper oxygen, right? So in that, in the same thing here, if you convert it to say, look here, you can click on the dot here or you can simply convert it. But what will happen uh, wherever the value got mixed with the dollar, it will throw an error. But here, we don't have control Z or control Z option to undo that. Okay, I mistakenly selected uh, the, they said it's a decimal number, right? I said it got uh, converts and, you know, so it will convert everything as a decimal number. But when it comes to the alphanumeric value, the dollar or Unicode character, like a dollar and that value, it will throw an error. You cannot undo that. Hey man, error is coming. Error should not be there, right? That is not an error. You, that That is a correct value only, but it mixed up with something. We need to address it. So for that, what we'll do is, we will go to the Power Query Editor. Look here, where can I find the Power Query Editor? Currently, I see how did I switch from Data View to Report View? Click on the Report View. Now we got switched from Data View to Report View. And here in the Home Ribbon, if you look at on the right side middle, there is something called Transform Data. If you click on the drop down, you will find the Transform Data. Hit the Transform Data. It will open up another window that is meant for data cleaning, data pre-processing, everything, data transformation, everything you do it here, Power Query Editor. 
here in the menu you will find a lot of options to do the data transformation everything look at the transform when you click on the transform ribbon so we call uh, it's a we don't see we call is a menu it is a ribbon okay the transform menu we can see a lot of options here i just clicked on the transform ribbon and here we can see the sales w04 table but when it comes to power query editor as the name says the query right in this case all the tables are considered as a query look here that's why it shows queries okay just keep this in mind these are the very subtle things but still if you remember it will be good and here here if you see uh, next to each column you can see something like abc abc means text data right? one to three means whole number <coughs> 1.2 if you see any icon 1.2 that is your decimal number data right? look here one point is decimal number and discount is also a decimal number data type and quant is a whole number uh, sales is a text data type you can see that so okay you know this is where you need to do the data cleaning everything okay don't do it in the data view itself but there are some cases it will work but this is the best place to do this so now what i do is i'm going to address this issue how am i going to address keep the cursor somewhere here right click on it and you will find something like replace values What I will do is here value to find, find the dollar, replace with nothing. So this is a text data type. Guys, remember one thing. In the case of text data, if you have blank value, that means empty string. Okay. So in this case, what will replace the dollar by empty string? I'm going to hit OK now. Look here. So this dollar will, will get removed by this way. Smartly we are removing it. Now the dollar got knocked off. Step one. And if you see here, we have NA here. First of all, this is an issue. How come a sales column can have a NA in it? You need to, when you see something like this, you need to check with your application owner or you need to check with customer. Don't directly jump in creating the report. When you find this, uh, this type of data issues, you need to you know, check with them. Hey, why we have NA here? Before um, we proceed creating the reports or dashboards, please tell me, is this the right data? And if they say, no, no, there's something wrong, give me some time, we will share the correct data. So then wait for center and then you do it. Or if they say, okay, replace the all NA by zero at this present, we will give you data later. You, you can refresh it later. Okay, fine. So what we will do is, here we can click on the ABC. When you click on the ABC icon, you can see all the data types. Now also, if you click on a decimal number, everything will get converted as a decimal number data but unfortunately this one will get converted as an error so what we will do is right click on it again and this time we will replace na by zero here i'm going to hit ok button <coughs> now it is pretty clean and we have some statistic available here it's a beautiful thing how much percentage of valid data is there how much percentage of error is there how much percentage empty records are less than one percent but error is zero percentage this is good right um make sure that you don't have any error in case of any error it will not allow you to proceed further okay this is one painful thing and here um good cool so next thing is i click on the abc i am going to click on the decimal number look here 1.2 we can see 1.2 and error is nothing after converting the text data into decimal data type, it is not causing any error. I will just simulate that error. For example, I did not remove the dollar here. Uh, let me do one thing. I did not remove the dollar here. If I directly go and convert the decimal number, this one will you know replace correct. This one will become an error. Look here, error. Ideally, we need to take into account of this value as so it's a valid data according to us. But according to Power BI, this is not a valid data. So it requires, you need to first address this issue from the Power BI point of view. So what you need to do is you need to right click on it, replace values, dollar. Ideally, Microsoft can give some other option to undo the steps, whatever we deleted it, right? Okay, and then uh, I'm going to replace um, values NA by zero here. In case of any empty values are there, replace it by zero. 
Okay, but uh, still you can click on the drop down and you can see here, okay, still some blank values are there. Let us explore what the hell these blank values are. I'm going to click on okay here. Okay, so we could see that, you know, there are two records that have blank values in almost all the columns, not almost all the columns. In two records, blank values are there. Okay, you just keep that in mind. We will see how we can address that. So even that one requires some kind of treatment, okay? So I'm going to click on the cross now. Okay, now everything's valid is 19 in percentage, error is zero, empty is one percent, let it be there. Okay, fine. Now, um, at least we have addressed this issue. We converted successfully the texted column. Okay, we have not had done, right? Okay, I need to, one second, what we did? Uh, okay, next one is, yes, I need to directly go and convert the decimal number. Now it got converted the decimal number. How can I say decimal number? The icon says 1.2, which means decimal. Okay, on the right side, you can see something called applied steps. Just beneath that, look here, whatever the actions I carried out, it got captured. It is something like your CCTV. In your apartment, you have CCTV. With the help of the CCTV, you can find out which person came first, which person came later, right? Same way, with the help of the applied steps, we can find out in what sequence, uh, in which sequence, what action we carried out. That we can see it here. Look here, if I click on the, this one replaced value one, and here you can see that, um, here you can see that, we have replaced the NA by zero, okay? Okay, the next question is, um, okay, fine, these steps are helpful to understand, uh, you know, in what step, what action I took it. In this step, I replace the NA by zero, fine. What is this? This is called M language, M language, mashup language. So all we did was just point and click, right click on replace value, that's all. Behind the scene, on our behalf, in order for the Power BI desktop to understand the action we carried out, it generates some skip on its own. Hence, you don't have to write, you know, you know this, uh, you know, big line of uh, script, okay? But table dot replace value, replaced value, NA by zero, replacer, replace text, and sales. Okay, so uh, the sales column is a text data type. In that case, uh, you replace the NA by zero and finally change type. If you see here, and then what we did here, we re, you know replaced value one. This step, this are you know replaced values in a step, right? In this step, uh, you take this later step because in this step we replace the NA by zero, and then uh, take that step and then you convert the sales column as a number data type. Look here. In this case, what action I took it? Uh, Click on the replaced value, this replaced value. Here you can see that we, in the sales column, we have replaced the dollar by empty string. Good, so right now, so with the help of the uh, applied steps, we can find out in what sequence, what action that we took it, we can find out here. Supposing you, you for example, I just show you here. <clears throat> Look here, row dot ID. When I select this column, right click on it. If I remove this column, click on remove, that's all. But behind the scene, it creates a script, something like that. Table dot remove columns, row dot ID. Fine, it removed the column here. <coughs> later point in time, if you want to get that, least later point of somebody tells, hey, why did you remove the row dot ID? I need the column. Can you get it back? Yes, that is possible. Look here. The step, what we carried, you know, the last step, remove the column. Which column? row dot id so next to this step you will find the cross mark remember that in power query there is no control is that to undo the action in the notepad and uh, powerpoint if you type something and if you delete it and if you press control is it it will display the uh, before deleting the whatever value is it will display it right if you want to undo anything you can click uh, the cross next to that step if i click on it Look here, I got my row dot ID back, this column. So you got <coughs> bad amount of idea about the data transformation, the basic data transformation, okay? 
And here, the next thing is, um, I'm going to close and apply, which means close this Power Query Editor, but make sure that all the steps, whatever I current, apply it to my model. So you might be wondering, hey, so far I removed the columns, all the things, I replaced, uh, you know, these things. Uh, you know, all these changes, did it not happen at the model level? No. See, what happens is when you load the data, it's all stored in memory. Whatever changes we made, it, it all applied on the memory only. Only when you click on close and apply, <coughs> Power Creator will get closed. All the changes will get applied to your model. Model in the sense, uh, you are, yeah, the physical thing, okay? So, so far we have seen the, the report canvas, report view and um, data view. And then what is this? One second. <clears throat> okay, and the next one is a model view. So this is where we do the data model design everything. Here also you can find out the data type for each column. For example, if I click on the look here next to it says I can see the sigma notation, which means it's a numeric column. If you want to know the region column data, click on the region, and then we have some more properties. Okay, you just expand this one, and if you scroll down here, you will find uh, that these are text data type. Okay, and uh, I have uh, another data, another column called order date. If I click on it, so it shows the order date, um, sorry, the order date, uh, date column data type is text. Again, it requires some you know, treatment. This needs to be converted to date data type. Anyhow, we will discuss this <coughs> in the later sessions. Okay, now I just switch to um, the report view. Here, uh, next, what we'll do is uh, we explored how to load the CSV file into Power BI Desktop. And also we explored how to do the basic data transformation or, uh, you know, the uh, formatting, right? Column formatting, data type formatting. Okay, fine. So what is the, what next? Next, uh, we will, one second, I just, um, 